Don and Melissa, would you consider the federal stimulus package a success and please provide local examples? And second, would you support an additional stimulus package and what sector of the economy would it affect? Don and then Melissa, please. The problem is that the Democratic leadership in both houses and the White House have focused on the problem and not the solution. The solution is getting people back to work. I've talked to business people involved in the service sector and manufacturing, and they are terrified to hire new people because of the uncertainty of the health care bill, which officially made us part of the European Union, of cap and trade, of increased regulations under the EPA, and now an increase in income taxes. Business people have told me they want to hire but they're afraid to because they don't trust this president, they don't trust this Congress, and the economic uncertainties are so prevalent that they're simply not making a move. Now, many of you may be in that position yourself. The stimulus bill, McHenry County got something like 82 million dollars. We thought, well, you know, maybe there'd be something there for roads. Whatever the stimulus bill gave to our congressional district, I got to, took out. So we got nothing, absolutely nothing out of it, except road resurfacing. You cannot restore an economy by simply throwing money at it and printing money that doesn't exist. And that's been the whole philosophy of the stimulus. Now, if you want to have a real stimulus, you know what you do? Is you get off the backs of American manufacturers and small business people and allow them to create the jobs because they know how to do it. Especially in manufacturing. There was a $9 billion raise in taxes on this latest $26 billion bailout. That $9 billion is an increase in taxes for Caterpillar, John Deere, Illinois Tool Works, all the major manufacturers across the state right into our office and say, What's going on in Washington? Why are we raising the taxes of our manufacturers? You know what it's called by the Democratic leadership? Closing a loophole. Closing a loophole. You can't stimulate our way out of the economy. We have to grow our way out. We have to manufacture our way out. You can take all the figures that you want. Melissa, you know, I, I appreciate what you've seen me. There were one out of four people in Winnebago County are unemployed. And you tell them, I can't tell them their life is better now since the stimulus. In fact, they look at me and say, Congressman, don't stimulus us with more money. Just get out of our way. Make it easier for us to get a job. <laughs> when we were talking about in June of 2008, mentioned having a carbon tax. That cost our congressional district $1 billion in one city. And east of Buke, over the Mississippi River, when Rentec, which is a company that makes anhydrous ammonia, urea, other applications for fertilizer, uh, et cetera, was going to convert the fisher trucks process from using natural gas as a feedstock to, to coal, bring it up the Mississippi River, it would have started a natural green revolution across the top of the state. He mentioned carbon tax. The financing got pulled. One billion dollars over a thousand construction workers for two years, the creation of between 200 and 300 jobs. You don't stimulate the economy by voting for and passing things such as cap and trade. And they continue to talk about bills like that. And the longer that talk goes on in Washington, the more jobs we'll lose and the deeper we will go into a recession. How is it that both Fannie and Freddie were left out of the Financial Reform Act? Both under President Clinton and President Bush, the term affordable housing became a right, and then it became an entitlement. The Federal Reserve, to the extent that banks are governed by it, and that's most banks, have always had the authority to govern instruments and govern, un govern underwriting requirements. Pressure put on Fannie and Freddie Mae, especially by President Clinton, 
was not only to guarantee subprime and all day loans, but to buy up the crap. The countrywide was generating and hold it in its own portfolio. The problem is Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. The problem is not Shari Zank's bank. Now under this bill, the Consumer Product Division, set up in, in the Department of Treasury, has the authority to tell Shari exactly how much she can pay her tellers and everybody else. There is built-in bailout authority in this bill because the federal government can come in and say, you're too big and we're going to govern you and we may even shut you down. And the same government that destroyed General Motors by saying bondholders do not count by causing 50,000 people around the country to lose their jobs, and we've seen the angst and the horror, absolute horror of a government out of control destroying car dealerships, and now in a 2,200-page bill, they're saying, well, you know, this is going to take care of everything. Let me tell you the latest that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are, are planning to do, and I'm glad you see it. There may be, on August 17th, a document coming from the Obama administration which may announce a plan to require Fannie and Freddie to write down portions of all underwater mortgages backed by the GSEs. $880 billion. So if you bought a house that you couldn't afford in the first place and you owe more on it than what it's worth, the government's going to pick up the rest. If you bought a house and the market's down and you're underwater, the government's going to come in and mysteriously pick up and pay uh, for the extent to which that mortgage is underwater. You can't have a free government and have this type of incessant interference. The issue is not with derivatives, it's what the derivatives were about. And they were about the subprime mortgages. Folks, do you realize it wasn't until October of last year that the Federal Reserve came up with a requirement that you had to have proof in writing as to what your wages were? They just sat back and saw this whole thing take place. And they were afraid to do anything. Because they thought they might offend some people and make homes unaffordable. It is not that hard to control this problem. You don't go in there with a set of controls and say we need more oversight and more regulation. You simply take a look at the products. It's so simple. You can't buy a home unless you can afford it. That's called common sense. And the regulatory agencies already have the authority to do that. And now we're given to the same people who have the authority to stop this mess and say, why don't you go in there and make sure this doesn't happen again? You don't need bills like that. You need common sense. You need less regulators. And the reason that we're having such a hard time with the capital flow in, in this country is not a matter of the banks not having money. It's when you talk to the regulators, they're over here, the examiners are over here, and the banks are being held up to dry uh, with their with their with, with the people, with their customers saying, why won't the bank lend me money? And a good common sense loan that should pass any audit is coming in now and being classified. So, who's to blame for all of this? Yep, the same ones that are now in control of all those programs under this brand new bill. We don't need that. 